Hello everybody, I'm Sol and today I'm going to be doing a special presentation. Today I'm going to present an idea for the World of Warcraft and well I hope you enjoy yourself but first I should probably uh, preface this with something. Once upon a time, 13 almost 14 years ago, players around the world had jumped into the World of Warcraft for the very first time. They spawned in the cracked earth of Durotar. They walked out of Northshire Abbey, or they rose from the crypts in um, Tirith Fall Glades. Since then, we players, we champions of Azeroth, have journeyed all over the world. And beyond that, we traveled through time to alternate dimensions and even to the seat of the gods themselves. And with all that said and done, we look back to ourselves and war with one another once again, returning to the very roots of Warcraft. And when all of that's done, at some point we're going to return to our home. We just don't have one yet. Today I'm going to make my heartfelt attempt to sell you on player housing. Player housing is designed to be a new content platform, designed to tap into creativity and a love for collecting. I'm going to identify several value propositions for the players and the developers and look forward to the future of the World of Warcraft. I'll provide an overview of how the system is going to work, and I'll provide an example of how players are going to dive in and interact with it. First though, I'm going to talk about the philosophy of WoW's development and design and how that's changed over time. Early in World of Warcraft's development, design was more or less shot from the hip. It was just trying to pump out the content just as they went as fast as they could. Fast forward to today's WoW, the design team over at Blizzard is now looking at the long term after so many years have passed. In a few ways, Blizzard is trying to prevent or curb the amount of bloat that occurs. Too many abilities, too many systems that are stacking against each other and possibly imbalancing the entire scape of WoW. And so, there are a number of changes that were made, such as refining the backend systems and creating account-wide systems. These are systems such as transmogrification or transmog, such as the ability to uh, collect and share multiple pets and mounts without the need of storing or otherwise filling up your inventory. These efforts have allowed systems like the Talent Row to not necessarily need to grow, although that's a very debatable topic. It's allowed the need for bigger bags to not be that much of a concern. However, while the developers are fans, fans aren't exactly developers. We don't have the same kind of long-term vision that Blizzard is envisioning. We try to live in the moment, the raid week, the expansion, the tier, and so on. So the current approaches to WoW these days are these dubious, these temporary systems. We're talking short-term, artifacts, legendaries, um, Azerite gear, the Order Hall, the Garrison. These are systems that had a very high impact at the time, but as soon as the expansion is over, we quite literally walk away from them. Once upon a time, I was the commander of Garrison, until I left. Once upon a time, I was the High Lord of the Silver Hand, possessing the mighty Ashbringer. But then all of a sudden, I became another cog in the war machine between the Horde and the Alliance. And now, I'm a champion of Azeroth, wearing the heart of Azeroth, the, the very center of the world, and donning these, well, this Azerite gear. But in a couple years' time, I'm going to be abandoning that as well. And what am I going to use next? What follows me from place to place, from expansion to expansion? One of the big cells of housing is that we're going to try to tie something together to ensure that the past that we've lived and the future that we can look forward to can all be tied together with a singular system. Something much greater than what achievements would be able to deliver on. And something much more broad in scope than what transmogrification can deliver. So philosophically, what is housing going to be in the world of Warcraft? It's going to deliver on the promise of evergreen content. And for those who aren't familiar with the term, evergreen content is simply content that you can jump into right now and maybe leave it alone, but then it's always going to be there. It's always going to have some relevance. And even better, housing can potentially expand with every expansion that comes out because with every new expansion comes new art, new assets, new doodads to take advantage of. 
And also, housing is going to be the kind of system that players want it to be, and that includes being entirely forgettable. Players can entirely skip it, just like the collecting of transmog or pets, it can be something that can be almost entirely ignored by players, or it can be their absolute endgame obsession. It just depends on what you want, and this version of housing hopes to bring you that. I said that this could be a form of endgame, especially for collectors, but it's not just collection that housing will bring, but it's also going to bring the challenge of expressing that collection in a very visual form. Potentially, you can spend hours and hours just repositioning or redesigning or going out there to farm for what you need in order to redecorate your home for a certain theme that you're looking for. And one of the best things that you can do with your brand new home is to show it off to your friends in or outside of WoW through social media. Just how we can share our newest transmog experiment, the new achievement that we learned, or the, the new boss kill that we brought down. So before I get into some high-level concepts as to what housing is, let me first go into what it is not. It's not going to be a tie-in feature or an expansion feature as we've seen recently in the Battle for Azeroth achievement UI. This is going to be, like I said, evergreen content and not something like the Garrison or the Order Hall. It's not going to be a path to power. It's not going to be something where you can collect herbs or ore or otherwise make your character stronger. So housing is not going to be a means to an end. It's going to be the end. When the raids are over, when the best in slot collection is collected, when you're waiting for the new expansion to come out, you can celebrate these victories with a couple of trophies on your wall. So what is housing? Obviously it's home, so you'll be able to access a mailbox as well as accrue rest XP while you're there. Housing is a blank canvas that players will be able to fill and give an expression of themselves, either as a player or as their character, or, or both. It's going to be constructed with assets and doodads that have been found since the very beginning of the World of Warcraft, and it's going to go beyond that as we move from expansion to expansion. And the system that governs housing is going to be account-wide. Now that's very important, but I'm going to get to that in just a few moments. Through sharing either in-game or through social media, this will hope to inspire players to think to themselves, hey, you know what? Maybe I can make a dragon-esque theme kind of house. Or maybe my, my, maybe my home won't really be a home. It's just going to be a collection of armor and weapon racks to show off all of my accomplishments. Or it can be a big floor with... It could be a big dance party floor for all we care. The point is it's going to be your system to do as little or as much as you want in it. So how's this going to work? I think from the get-go, players should be able to access the ability to build their home at something like level 58, level 60, pretty much by the time that they can go to either Outland or Northrend. Once they hit this level, they'll visit their capital city, talk to an NPC if they want to, and they'll be introduced into their home. To keep things simple, housing is going to be instanced. All you have to do is walk through a portal, and there you are, at your home. When you first choose your home though, one of the very first things that you're going to choose is where do you want it to be? Given that you're getting this quest as early as level 58 or level 60, there's only so many places that you've seen in the Eastern Kingdoms or Kalimdor, because technically, you haven't been to Northrend yet. You haven't seen alternate Draenor, not yet, at least. And you'll be able to unlock different locations as you level as you obtain certain achievements, as you visit new locales, or maybe uh, max out your reputation with a certain faction, and then they'll let you move into their lands, maybe. So for the heck of it, let's choose Ashara as our first spot. We go through a tutorial, we get the basics of what needs to be done in order to build our home, and we're given a home to start with. A roof over our head, a bed, a mailbox, and that's pretty much it. Oh, that's right. We also get several blueprints and a couple materials to get us started too. So what are we supposed to do with these blueprints and materials? Just kind of mash them together? Of course not. There's going to be a new UI that will be built around this system, and for lack of a better term, I'm going to call this UI home building. Home building is one part UI, like transmogrification, and one part profession tab. The home building UI will govern almost everything with regards to what recipes we have, how many materials that we have, and what do we need in order to build 
I don't know, the chandelier that looks like Argus's head. As a young level 60 player, we don't have a lot of experience building furniture, putting stuff together, or otherwise building our home, beyond the very basics. So from here, and throughout our entire WoW career, we can start gathering blueprints, as well as materials and parts, in order to build whatever it is that we need. Blueprints are quite literally like recipes for any profession. These can be dropped from monsters, from maybe quests, or even purchased from a vendor. Most of these recipes, like for example, if I wanted to make a lava lamp out of Cthulhu's eyes, well, I'm going to need parts. And the majority of these parts are going to be made by the various professions. There are, of course, going to be some special recipes where you need to defeat a certain enemy in order to get it. You want to make that Cthulhu lava lamp? Maybe you need to get a couple of Cthulhu eyeballs. All the parts that you gather are going to be considered account bound, and that includes the Cthulhu eyes that you've gathered from, from AQ. When it comes to parts that are gathered from crafters, all you have to do is right click it and it's going to be added into your inventory. And like I said, the materials are going to be shared across your entire account. Also, any furniture that you create with these materials are also going to be shared across your entire account. So for example, let's pretend that I created uh, two swimming pools of lava because you know, that, that totally makes sense. So I have these two pools of lava and I lay them down, I, I deploy them into my home on my main. I can switch to another character who had just unlocked their ability to build a home and I can immediately plop down those two uh, pools of lava as well. Everything's going to be shared. There's really no need to punish people for wanting to have multiple characters and having a different style of home per character. So this also means that for the most part, you can build multiple chairs, multiple lamps, multiple pools of lava, multiple statues, multiple of almost whatever you like and be able to deploy it in your home. The exception would be some very rare, maybe epic recipes such as Gahoon's lava lamp, such as a variation of the Lich King's throne. You can probably only have one of those in your home at a time. So to summarize how all this works, you first unlock your home. You scour the world for different blueprints to unlock different recipes. From there, you obtain parts by defeating enemies or getting them from the different crafting professions. And I mean all the crafting professions. Scribes and alchemists can make paints, for example. Blacksmiths can make, I don't know, serenite screws. An archaeologist maybe can display multiple copies of that canopic jar that you hoped would have had that one recipe but never did. And I should also add that after you build that gold emblazoned chair, it's not going to cost as many materials as it did after that first time. It's a nice little one-time upgrade as if after you built it the first time, you just kind of get a rank two. So some of the fun, or the grind, because we know that everyone here in the world of Warcraft loves to grind, is going to be about getting these really rare components and parts that the crafters cannot make. Sometimes it's going to be exceedingly difficult to get them. Sometimes there might be small boosts to the drop rate, such as if there happens to be a time walking event. If you want, I don't know, Illidan's horns to be hung on your wall and you need certain stuff from Illidan, you probably get a better chance, uh, a better chance drop of it if you encounter him in the time walking version of Black Temple as opposed to the level 70 version. And the same could go for maybe a mythic dungeon event or a pet battling event where certain activities will give a higher chance of the thing that you want to drop to appear. More common examples that I think I already talked about already include the armor racks or the weapon racks, but as a little bit of extra flavor, maybe you can have a little plaque that you can click on and you can input a short story of how you obtain that awesome weapon or shield or armor. There's different lighting options in the form of lamps, which can be governed by, let's say, jewel crafting. And there could be a whole number of mailbox variants as a final example. So while I would be stoked to be introduced to housing, I know that there are a couple of challenges that need to be overcome. One of which is it just won't be easy. We need to actually implement this first, right? There are a number of systems that need to be built on, including the home building UI, that could take considerable amounts of time. 
also notice that I didn't talk about the exact specifics on how the home building really works. As in, am I able to just freely build an entire house from the ground up? Are there going to be uh, prefabricated buildings that are assigned to me from Blizzard? Are there going to be templates of some sort, like this section of wall can only fit, you know, three large posters or, um, you know, 10 medium posters or something like that? So there are bound to be limitations to the system, mostly in the interest of time. There are, of course, going to be some technical hurdles, such as the instancing technology that needs to be implemented for housing, the memory involved, and, well, I guess the most important thing is that housing might suck. It might be a feature with a very woeful adoption rate, either because players aren't interested in it, or the implementation might not fulfill their promise. But I'm trying to sell the idea of housing on the hope and the potential impact of this system. Once upon a time, Blizzard developers came up on stage and they described garrisons as Blizzard's version of player housing. And it came with its own pluses and minuses, but I see this new version of housing as the antithesis of the garrison, as in this is going to be a system that drives players out into the world. It drives professions to feel relevant, regardless of which version of professions we're looking at. This is going to have an almost immediate economic impact. Those lava cores from uh, Molten Core that you've been massing up or otherwise vendoring, maybe they'll have some value now all of a sudden. And I want to deliver on a system that players such as myself have been asking for for years and yet deliver it in such a way that it is still optional for those who aren't as interested in it. Finally, I want to deliver on something that can be considered a content platform that is not simply just a temporary feature that we jump into and then leave alone. I want to see something that an entire industry is built around. I'm going to wrap this up with a reminder that the World of Warcraft is a huge story that we're simply a part of. Some of the stories that we create for ourselves come from the interactions with other players, some of the adventures that we have together, but largely the story itself is something that's not written by us. I still want to see the story continue, but at the same time, I simply want to have the ability to one day visit my home and look at this creation that I made from all my experiences, all of the achievements that I've built. I don't want to see it just on a UI. I want to walk into it and look around and see all the things that I've hung up, all the posters that I've made, all of the weapons that I've acquired, all the armor racks and the pools of lava with things coming out of it. It's my desire to experience and celebrate the world of Warcraft with this new form of self-expression. And that's all I've got. Thank you.